So today we are going to discuss about top five mistakes that you should be avoiding to speed up your progress in data science preparation. So let's start with mistake number one, which is not learning mathematics efficiently. You see, people will be very curious and active when it comes to learning a programming language, data visualization tools, or algorithms of machine learning or deep learning. But their interest will simply go away when it comes to learning mathematics as a machine learning prerequisite. And there are various reasons for that. First is that people think it is too difficult to cover all those mathematical concepts and to do all the mathematical calculations by themselves. Secondly, people also tend to move away from this topic because they did not have a background in mathematics. In reality, you don't need to be concerned about any of these things. Instead, people should realize that it will become very difficult to study machine learning without having this prerequisite clear. You will have a lot of interruptions and this will become a demotivating factor for you. And also, you don't need to do any kind of mathematical calculation by yourself manually because all these mathematical calculations will be executed by a programming language. All you need to do is you should have some basic understanding that what kind of mathematical operation is actually taking place behind that one line of code. This is all that you need, nothing else. You don't need to be super smart in mathematics, but you should have some basic understanding on linear algebra, calculus, matrix multiplication, integral, statistics and so on. But for sure you won't be asked to do any kind of manual calculation by yourself. And in contrast, it is also not suggested that you study mathematics for a very long time. Like for 6 months and 8 months, you are only studying mathematics as a machine learning prerequisite. That also clearly won't be a good idea. Because the understanding that you need can easily be covered within 4-6 to six months if you stay consistent and dedicated. And also as you progress in mathematics, as you keep on learning new topics, you will tend to forget the old ones. And this is why I also suggest that you should document everything. You should have a personal notebook or a document where you are documenting everything in your language that you can understand later on if you tend to forget it. And you can always fall back to these notes whenever you get stuck while studying machine learning. And that should be the actual strategy. If you will have a mindset that you will start studying machine learning only once you conquer the entire mathematics, then trust me that you will get stuck in a loop. Because it doesn't matter how much you study, there will be always a bit more to learn in mathematics. Common mistake number two is around learning Python. So I am going to highlight few things where most of the people are doing wrong. Python is a versatile language and it has implementation in lots of areas. And this is why Python has tons of libraries and frameworks to offer. And this is where people get confused. They will start taking back to back courses in order to complete everything. And the major mistake that people make is they will focus more on watching Python tutorial videos instead of practicing it by themselves. You need to acknowledge and understand that why actually you need that programming language. So let's say if you're someone who wants to learn Python in order to work in data analysis or data science, then you have very limited libraries and framework to learn. You don't need to learn everything within the Python language. And I have also observed that people avoid spending enough time practicing NumPy and Pandas. See, these are the two essential libraries in order to do data manipulation with the help of Python. So you simply cannot avoid these two libraries. And also you cannot have enough practice within 6 to 8 weeks. For me it has been more than 3 years and I am still practicing it every day. So essentially if you don't acknowledge that why exactly you need the Python programming language and which libraries and frameworks exactly you need to learn for your purpose, then it is going to delay your entire progress. Now let's move on to mistake number three, which is getting stuck in a data science course loop. It is a situation where people will do back to back courses in order to land a job. With each and every course, they will assume that right after completion of this particular course, they will be able to land a job. And when this doesn't happen, they will finally have to take another course. And this is actually a very wrong approach by the way. This topic is going to be very relatable, especially for the beginners. And to be very honest with you, I have also experienced this in my past. So I'll tell you what happens. Today within the edtech industry, a sort of scam is going on where there are a lot of courses which is coming up with a job guarantee program. Their main target are the beginners who are trying to make a transition into data science and who are desperately looking for a job. Those are the people who easily fall for this trap. And just by assuming that right after completion of a course, 
right after watching a 20 hour long course they will be able to land a job it is a completely wrong assumption even if you try to think logically then you simply cannot become a data scientist or a data analyst just by watching a course even if the course is offering you 20 or 30 industry based real life projects but if you are not doing those projects by yourself then you are actually not becoming job ready however this is the major mistake that most of the new people are doing and i am also not saying that all the courses within the edtech industry are a scam. There are literally few courses which are really good that can actually make you job ready. But if you look into the curriculum of those courses, you will find that only 25 to 30 percent of the entire curriculum is actually tutorial and the rest of the entire thing rest of the 70 percent of the entire curriculum is actually project but instead going for this approach let's say your 80 percent effort is going after watching the tutorial in that case you are doing nothing but just procrastinating your preparation so the bottom line is spending too much time in watching courses is not a good idea you should complete the course in a very short amount of time like two to three months and rest eight to ten months you should be absolutely engaged working on projects which brings us to mistake number four which is not getting your hands dirty by working on projects see the thing is that along with the completion of a data science course we also complete working on few projects that were given as a resource within that course itself but the thing is these projects are actually guided projects where you were provided the help for each and every step of the entire solution and this is why it is not helpful to develop your own critical thinking and after this stage people actually tend to avoid taking projects from Kaggle or other parallel websites and to work on them by themselves. It is because they have a fear of unknown. People often think that what if they are not able to solve the problem? What if they get stuck somewhere? So eventually there is a fear of failure. And to be honest, it is absolutely fine to have these thoughts. What's not okay is to restrict yourself from working on new projects by all these fear. When I also started working within my first internship, I was also not feeling very comfortable right from the first day. I was feeling helpless, clueless and too much underconfident. But as I have also talked about it previously that my mentor was really good and supportive who did not allow me to give up and by time I was eventually doing well. So you also need to follow the same path actually. Initially you will feel doubtful, you will feel that what if, if you are not able to solve a problem. But let's say for an entire data science project, even if you are not able to finish it end to end, but let's say you are doing very well in terms of EDA, feature engineering, data cleaning and pre-processing which means you are doing 70% of the task within a data science job absolutely smooth and this is what's needed. So the projects that you do within your data science course actually doesn't count that much. You need to do few projects at least 15 to 20 projects by yourself where you are developing your own critical thinking and that will actually make you eligible to land a job. Now let's discuss about the fifth and final common mistake which is rush of completing the data science preparation. I I understand that it is important that you finish a given task within a decided timeline. But when you are studying something like data science, it becomes even more important to enjoy the learning curve. So a lot of times we will see that people setting a very tight deadline of six to eight months for completing the entire data science preparation. And there is nothing bad in that unless the deadline stress starts impacting your learning curve. So it is fine if due to some reason you are taking two to four months longer in order to complete the module. But it is more important that you should be enjoying the learning that whichever topics you are covering you should have a very strong grip on that. But let's say in a rush of meeting the deadline, you are just skipping to have a deep understanding on the important topics. In that case, even if you complete the entire preparation within a decided timeline of yours, your learning will not be effective enough to make you land a job. So have a deadline that is fine, but make sure that it should not impact or stress out your learning. Different people have different journey, different background, and this is why they require different amount amount of time in order to complete their preparation. In the previous video I have shared with you that how I completed 
completed my data science preparation within one year of time. But at the same time, I also shared with you that what kind of background I had regarding my graduation, my job experience, my prior knowledge, everything. And this is why it is absolutely normal if a random person is taking longer than me. So it is fine to set a deadline, but please make sure that it should not be stressing out your learning. But I understand for a lot of people, it becomes more important to land a job within three to six months, maybe due to their personal circumstances. And I respect that. In that case, you also don't need to complete the entire data science job preparation because in order to land a job in the analytics field, there are few skills that you can learn only within three months and you can become sufficient enough to land a job. If you want, then I can make a dedicated video on that topic where I will tell you that what skills exactly you will need to prepare for a job within a short amount of time and what should be the roadmap to do the entire preparation. So let me know your thoughts below if you want me to make a video on that topic because you clearly need to understand that what is more important for you. Is it more important to land a job within three to six months or you want to become a good data scientist doesn't matter how long it takes. These are two completely different situations and this is why going by your situation you should have a customized planning. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching till the end. If you like this kind of content then please consider dropping a like video. Subscribe to the channel to become an early member. On this channel, I'm trying to create simple, helpful tutorials and career guidance videos to help people who are trying to make a transition into data science. And the next video on this channel will be on top 5 ideas to prepare for data science. So hopefully, now you have understood few mistakes that you should be avoiding that we have been discussing so far. In the next video, we will discuss few ideas that will work as a hack to fast forward your progress in data science preparation. Thank you very much for your time today and hopefully we will meet in the next video. Till then, take care and goodbye.